afternoon we will be discussing the renormalization group for electronic systems with some focus on disorder okay and it is based on a paper by gurunandan bhat myself and subarao way back i believe in 1985 okay when i believe it was the journal of physics i will share this paper with you uh yeah, as soon as this lecture gets over i have to make a disclaimer the, the renormalization group for electronic systems requires the use of second quantization occupation number representation and since this language is rather foreign to you i will take a very simple example today and go over the language of second quantization and uh, how should i say and the occupation number representation so if you have never had it this would be probably the most elementary lecture you can ever have on the second quantization and the occupation number so today's lecture just a demo so you start with a single band hamiltonian and you write it for a finite system so the idea is the idea of the normalization group is very similar to the idea of the majority rule okay the majority rule uh, is very simply put the following you want to know how a country has to what step a country has to take regarding the three laws the farm bill or something so what do you do? you what do you do is you do blocking you say i will take a, a vote of every panchayat uh, in uh, say in this block or in this sc i'll take a vote okay and if the vote is for the farm bill then i'll assume that the whole panchayat believes that there should be a vote in favor of the farm bill. then i will say among all the seven or 10 panchayats in the tehsil have the majority of the panchayats voted for the farm bill and if they have then i'll assume that the whole block has agreed on this okay. <coughs> so it's called blocking scheme and then and then taking what is called a uh, this kind of a voting that we normally do and in this context it is called real space renormalization so we will do that the idea is very similar to that so today we will do just a preliminary we will take the hamiltonian uh, with the same the idea of mu sum over n n n and this is probably the tenth time that i am writing down this hamiltonian in this course minus p sum over n n plus 1 on that clear so that is the hamiltonian then of course we know that e of psi is equal to e of psi so let us write that bracket as This is the eigenvalue. This is the Schrodinger equation. The next step is to say that okay, my psi can be written as a complete set of Banach states. So what is n now? This is this case. This n is the Banach state. Either I'm writing the Hamiltonian as the Banach representation. And not in the block representation. In the block representation, it would be diagonal. If you force me and say, "No, write it in the block representation," this is how it would look. Something like that. Okay, that should be one of those. But something like that, if you force me to write. So that would be the block. Let me erase this because it's strictly not true. This is equal to a projection operator. It is one. So why would you not write? Okay. But this is in the Banach representation. So now what I will do is I will take P 
and Basically, if you use the also banality of the one-year representation, the fact is the one-year representation is not common. That is all that I'm asking you to do. You can get an expression which is the following. I can get it. Please work it out. If you are not able to get this, at least you know we have know very little about it, and you have to look this up. I can change the index. I can call this P as N just for my so that I am more comfortable with N instead of P. So let us grant that this will happen. That is the coefficient of the one year representation will appear in this patch. Now, what is my system? The system is not a one dimensional solid which is infinitely long, but now I have a finite solid. So I have a finite one dimensional system. So that is one change from what I have done earlier. So, what does my system look like? Since I'm going to keep the system forever, uh, let me use the, this part of the black hole. So I have one atom, two atoms, three atoms, say P atom, then you have something like N S minus one and N S. So there are in all there are N S atoms. Let's take N S to be an odd number. Now you might say, tell me what would be the wave function like? What would the an minimally uh, coefficients? Now how would the wave function look like? So there are two representations I write. There's the block representation and then there is the one year representation. Have, you have, for example, now you made a little bit of Now I would have basically that my N, or let us say AN. Basically, if you remember, it looked like 1 over uh, root N into P raised to I K N A. That is what the blocks, blocks there. Said that it should, AN should be AN and K. Uh, now, what am I going to pass? This is the Fourier representation, and there's something called the block representation. So we know that the block, block representation, is that one by n, sum over n, p raised to i k in a, and vice versa. For example, this n would be one over root n, sum over k, p raised to minus i k in a. Where have we done this? Long, long ago when I had blocks theorem, I did this. This is how it works. But this is true provided you have an infinite solid. Now you don't have an infinite solid. So you have to write the most general form and you write this like this. A, here is to I, K, and A. This being here is to minus I, K. So basically, Capture the physics that there is an outgoing traveling wave and there is an incoming traveling wave. So you have a standing wave. The 
a of zero. Let's call this the zero side. Zero equal to zero. Because it's a standing wave, the wave function has to vanish there. In fact, this is one. So if you think of some other side here as a of zero, there's no wave function. So that's what it means. A of zero is zero, that means A plus B implies A is equal to minus B, and therefore it implies that KN is equal to A prime sine. is to say since the wave function as it is very similar to the particle in the box in that the origin of the wave function has to vanish it's between zero and l a psi of zero has to be zero and that's what it is so i get a sine form <coughs> also psi at n s plus one also has to be zero okay. and that gives you uh, that gives you a expression for k so to proceed, what we say is a of n s plus one is equal to zero. That implies, and we also can also take, say, for example, that the lattice constant is one. Just for we know how to carry this all the way through. Lattice constant is one. Therefore, that gives you a condition that this k, okay. Has got to take a certain form. Where is that? This is n s plus one. Okay, must take some form like phi r. Okay, r equal to one. Having said this, I will stop for a minute or two. Because this has not been the most clear lecture that I have given. So go over this and see if there is something which is confused. <coughs> That is because I am saying and I am brought into a real space renormalization group. So I can only take a finite lattice. So I want a finite lattice with say n s atoms. We cut it off. Okay. So this that is why this lecture is somewhat different from the earlier lecture they have had on single band side binding Hamilton. Here the solid is not going off till infinity. It is stopping. We are stopping it. Let me erase this. I, basically, I don't need any of this. But I just would like to write down the final equations and I will repeat them. If I need any of this, I will write it down. All that you need is this. This picture. So, what is the picture once again? What is the renormalization group picture? What you do is you take some finite number of sides. And I say that I cannot solve this problem. There are about 10,000 atoms I cannot solve. So, what you are 
supposed to do is you take the three at a time or take ten at a time if you want. And block it. And then take, for example, here this is connected by mu and t. How does what defines this? There are only two parameters in the Hamilton. One is mu the on-site term and t is the transfer of the hopping term. So these are the two things which define it. Same thing over here, mu and t. What defines this mu and t? Is that clear? So what you say is I'm going to block this and I'm going to have only one side. With mu prime, only one side, with mu prime, only one side, with mu prime. That's the idea. Okay, and instead of this t, I'll have a renormalized t, which I call t prime. Now it is up to my ingenuity and my own uh, thought process or in how smart I am to get this mu prime and t prime. So from a nine side problem, I've got a three side problem. And then so on and so forth. There is one price that you pay which is sort of decimate. This is called decimation. When you decimate, you may have a mu prime and t prime. You might get one more extra term. You don't know what to have. So I call that term G0. Might, not that you will get it. You might get another term. Some pre term will come out. It also happens that if you're not very smart and you do this kind of a problem, then instead of getting just nearest neighbors, you might generate next nearest neighbor couplings. So this will start getting coupled to this. It can also happen. Okay. But that is a trial and error with some understanding of Ken Wilson in the last century. Okay. I know how to do this. So that I don't land up in, with a very messy Hamiltonian in the end. So that is the idea. The idea is decimation. And this is a form of what is called a real space denomination. So having given you this picture, which we will not be approaching at least in this lecture today, in fact, not even in the next lecture. Let me continue. So, okay. So, I have basically, I have something like this in my body of state. And uh, basically, something like uh, like creates, and this is for example, what is the vacuum? P and vacuum. On every side, how many sides are there? N S sides. And on every side, there is no, nothing in there. Zero, zero means there is no atom or anything. There is no electron over there. And what this will do is this will create an electron on the nth side. That is how second quantization comes in. Of course, this you will have to accept. What I am saying is, there is something called the vacuum state. The vacuum state is one in which there are ns sides, but no electrons at all. And on that vacuum state, I am going to put one electron in the end. The meaning of this operation is to put an electron in the end. This is called a creation operator, as opposed to a destruction operator, in which you simply would have Cn, okay. And with the rest of the one over here, so it can destroy something. If Cn acts on the vacuum, you'll get zero. 
don't get anything at all. You get you know, it vanished. So now, supposing I have three sides. Let's add three sides. There is a diagonalize the San Antonio for me and get me the energy levels and the wave function. So say yes, it's not very difficult because I just have to write down the three by three matrix and diagonalize. If you do diagonalize it, which you can do as a home assignment, you get the answer you will get is there will be one level P1, which will be mu minus root two P, P2, which will be mu. And P3, which will be mu plus P. This is what you want me to show you, or you say you can do it. I think you can do this 3 by 3 diagonal right? by taking a 3 by 3 matrix and diagonal. In fact, if you have something like this, it will be mu, 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 minus P. Minus T, minus T, minus T, just the diagonal. It's called a banded matrix, called a tri diagonal matrix. In fact, even if you give me 20, thousand sites, I will tell you how to do it. Not just Y3, I can give you, give you an for 20,000 sites. So it is possible to try. So these are the energy levels. Now, if you have this energy levels, it is customary to write this as r equal to 1, by this is r equal to 2, r equal to 1. That is my notation. By the r equal to 1, I mean the ground state, the lowest state, then the middle state, the highest state. This is my notation, I am reducing the notation. So see my notation. In general, if we have an infinite lattice, Simon is basically k and it is mu minus 2 p plus That we have done all of them. Many moons ago we did this. But if you have a lattice with n sides, then you are, if it is 3 sides, you will get this. But if you have something like uh, n sides in general, you will get ek. Be equal to mu minus p and uh, I'll have to find it. I will just show to you. Now you say, where will I get this? Supposing I am very interested and I would like to guide me where to get it. The first person who worked this out was Kulsar. Quantum chemist, Kulsar was a quantum chemist. I think he was in Oxford. He was in Oxford. You will find it in his paper in 1920. This paper is referenced in the paper that I will make. If you want, you can look up this. The other thing is, there are thousands of other places where it is now worked out. So it is nothing very special. The latest one I am I, there is one that I just sent the paper to uh, Chandrasekhar Iyer, okay. uh, a paper by Mesmer also. Showed. And there are many books on numerical recipes for tri diagonal matrices, which tell you this recipe, how to get it. Is the energy level. You might say, what about the equivalent of the density of states? Right? So here, the, these are the energy levels. Allow me to just plot it. So this is a triangle. If I have an infinite lattice, how would it look? It would look like this. 
as my as my energy level. I will get I will get this as my energy. Level. Number one. Number two. If I am looking at the density of states, the band structure will have these crosses. And they will not have a continuous line because n is not infinite. If I am looking for the density of state, what do I have to do over here? I have to take this and sum it. But to sum this energy from r equal to 1 to r equal to n is minus 1 by 2. So the n is 11. Okay, so I have to go from 1 to 6. To sum. Is that clear? By the way, all this, whatever I'm going to write down next is there in Kulsen's article and also my article. See, if I were to sum this, what will I get? I will get mu into ns minus 1 by 2 minus, and now I'm stuck. How do I sum this cosine terms? Is this clear? So I'll just write down the answer. It is this one that I was trying to prove. The answer is E. If I take tangent, don't write it down. Let me write it down first before you write it. And this is the answer. If I were to sum it from r equal to 1 to ns minus 1 by 2, I will get this. Let me just check. Okay, I think it is something like this, but certainly in my paper, which I will mail this expression. Like the angles are in a harmonic progression. Ah. So you can sum them. So it's quite simple to sum it, but I was not able to do it on the way here. That's what I mean. You can also do it. Okay, please verify that you get this potential curve. Are you with me? Are we on the same wavelength so far? It seems that I am repeating something that you know, but it also seems that I am sort of jumping the gun a little bit and I'm not uh, saying things which you don't. So I just pause again for two minutes so that I know that uh, I convey uh, some knowledge at least. Uh, sir, this is Pichitos. Yeah. So the final expression which we got, uh, mu by n is the cotangent one. Uh, that is the total, the sum of all the energy in all the states at zero Kelvin temperature at equal to zero. Not all the states up to this point. Up to that. Okay. Half back. For the half time back. Yes. Okay. None of this is something which is beyond you at the moment. But try to go over it and see that you can, how should I put it, that you can uh, cross the P's and dot the I's. You're getting it right. Bang on the that, is, uh, that is important. So, let me erase this. Yes, have you used the creation operator? That will come now. That is not yet come. So the use of the creation operator and the occupation operator number I will come to later. Right so far it is just background noise. Something that doesn't require anything special. Something that even quantum chemists, if you're doing a chemistry class, you would be doing this. Because you can certainly think of a triatomic molecule, and this is simply nothing but a triatomic by the way, Wilson was a very famous point in the text. And uh, there's a very interesting story about it. Uh, Feynman 
for an MIT as an undergraduate student uh, through what is now known as the Edmund Python theorem. In which you say you take the you take the derivative of the potential, you say that it is the equivalent of a force expectation value. Or uh, in the modern theorem, uh, the Hellman final theorem, uh, it was crucial no objective, thought it was wrong, it was a mistake in it. Turned out that it was crucial no wrong. And the normalization group work is a work uh, that grew out of Scaling theory in 1960, Adam Witten and uh, Wilson made the connection between quantum field theory and statistics and mechanics and developed a very interesting idea of the denomination, for which he got very justifiably so the Nobel Prize in 1982. Probably the best mathematical. did it for classical systems, either model it. And then he went on also to show its power for quantum systems. And what we are doing now is not, not doing the very difficult problems that get attacked for the quantum system. We are doing something which will give you an idea of how to do a renomination group for a quantum system. In the unification, the most important idea was this great idea that things get, how should you say, by the time you are doing physics. You know, physics is different from chemistry. But physics, within physics, everything is different. But you know, when you look at this normalization group technique, you see the connection, the deep and useful connection that exists between, how should I put it, equality between quantum field theory and statistical mechanics. But what I would say is between quantum field theory, statistical mechanics, and many body And then disorders. I begin with this figure which I have sketched for you. Then one year and one year, the only three levels. Okay. One is at mu, mu is zero, so minus two, mu two t zero. Now I say I have only one electron. What is the energy of that electron? I can do three things. I can create that electron and put that electron here, in which case it will have minimum energy mu minus root two t, or I can put it here, in which case it will have energy mu, or I can put it here. How do I do it in second contact? So, what I do is I will say that I create an electron, this is R, this is the energy level, CR tag R. This is symbolic. That is, I'm going to create an electron in the first state. R equal to 2 would be the second state. R equal to 3 would be the third state. First state. Since the linear state and the block states are eigen, Fourier transforms kind of each other, this I will write. Then one thing I forgot to tell Write this expression, then I will explain. After I've explained it, I will 
into one algebra and have a stop. So what is this expression? It is the equivalent of what you saw when I discussed the block scale. It is the equivalent of saying that the block scale k is 1 by 0 10 1 over n it is 1. So there is a block n at uh, level at k that is nothing but the sum over all ends, all the linear states. So it's the sum over all ends. I know sum over it. Instead of e raised to i k, I have sign. Why sign? Because I have a standing wave. I told you in the beginning. I have a standing wave which is n pi r over n s plus one. R is equal to one of those. So I should write here r is equal to one. I write this down. In so instead of sum over n, there is a sum over n. Instead of e raised to i k n, I have a sign. What about this quantum thing? This is not normalization. This is nothing but the normalization. What is the way? In fact, you can satisfy yourself that if I have something like this, the proper normalization would take sign square of it and sum it up, the proper normalization would be this. If you cannot do ask, I will do it. But I can send you the material. Maybe along with the paper, I need to write in the autobiography song. But let us not stop ourselves because the normalization is not clear to me at this moment in time. Right? So this is how it is. Now let us explore what this means. We explore this. So I say, okay, so I'm coming from here. How much NS is how much is NS? N is equal to 3. So what is this quantity? How much is that? Yes, Mr. Patrick. 2 by NS plus 1 square root of what? Yes? This will go over how many sides? 1 to 3? So let me just write it down. So when n is equal to 1, what do I have? ns plus 1 is 4. Okay, right? This is 1. So I have pi by 4. So I have sign. So let me write that down. What do you think is Yes or no? Uh, I'll just try to pi by two. What is my vacuum? Three zeros. Because there are only three states. So there are three zeros. So if I do C1 dagger here, I will have 1, 0, 0. If I do C2 dagger here, I will get 0, 1, 0. And if I do C3, I get 0, 0, 1. This becomes equal to. This is 1 by 0, 2. If I get 1, 0, 1 by 0, 2. 0. This is what is meant by the occupation number. So I have created an elect electron where I put an electron in this here. This is like giving you some property that I have put an electron here and this is the answer. Is that clear? Does this answer make sense? So I will make two checks. I have two checks. One is that is it normalized? Is this wave function normal? So you take a similar one on this side, and when you do the normalization, so 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, so give you 1 by 4. This 
to give you 1 by 2 and it will give you 1 by 4. So it is not. But making sense on that. Now, is it making sense in terms of some symmetry that I would like to The answer is yes. Then the half is 1, 0, 0. Then the half is the first side. And then the half is the last side. It's not as though for the last side it will be a 1 by 4 or something like that. It is a symmetry on both sides. And then it is more on the middle side. So the wave function, the Manier wave function, you say, show me the Manier wave function. Then the first time you will actually see the Manier wave function in occupation space. It is some, something like this, and it is like this. That is what the wave function is. That is the way message is trying to convey to you. Is this clear? Just so that you become comfortable with this exercise, okay. let us do one more thing. Let us do one more thing. I'll keep this here, but we'll do one thing. Create this one. That is to say, ah, there's one more thing you can do, by the way. Wait, wait, wait. I did not tell you this. Very interesting. Do this definitely at home. Otherwise, you will never be happy about this whole life. You have to actually understand how it goes. Do one more thing. You take the Hamiltonian and you do this. You create this data. This uh, R equal to 1. That is, you sandwich the Hamiltonian between this day. What answer will you get? Yes, Mr. Iyer. If I were to take the Hamiltonian and sandwich it between this day. This so, day. One. Huh? so one. So one, one, one. How do you put the Hamiltonian? If you put nothing, you will get 1, because it is normalized. If you put the Hamiltonian, you will get mu minus root p. And if you don't, that means there is something you don't understand in the algebra. Right? So does this make sense? Only if it is normalized, which I have shown. Okay? Number 2, if it has got that symmetry which I think I wanted to have, okay, less on this side and higher in the middle. Okay, it cannot be wonky. I mean, it cannot be less here and higher or something. But both sides are equivalent for me. And the third is going to give you the right mu minus root for t. It gives you the right energy. So, as another exercise, so that you are comfortable, so let us do this. Let us do that. So, what will happen here? Yes, r is equal to 2. So, please pay attention on the blackboard now. Because in other words, there is no point. What will this give me? Tell me. Yeah. Tell me. What will this give? Me? One by root two. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now we have r equal to two. What is over here? Four. Two by four is two. Right. And the first one will be pi by two sine pi by two. We want that. What would be the next one? Yes, yeah, Saloni Mandloy. Nobody else should give me the answer. What would be the next one? Any equal to 2? Sir, I cannot really see the board. What did you say? Why not? Huh? Okay, can anybody else tell me? Nobody can see the board? It's a sine pi. Sine pi is 0. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Sine pi is 0. Plus. Now, what about the third term? Minus 1. Sine by five into so minus infinity into this right, okay? and then of course is one. So what you basically get is one by root two zero one. Uh, sorry, one zero one okay? minus 
Algebra is giving this. Now you say, does it make sense? Answer is, is it normalized or not? It is normalized. Okay. The second answer is, will it give me, if I take h between r equal to 1 and r equal to 2, r equal to 2 and r equal to 2, what answer should I expect? I should expect an answer like mu. Okay. Have you verified? The third is, does it show symmetry? And here you will object if the third is not showing the symmetry. This is 1 and this is minus 1. Okay. okay. Take care of this point. You say that, okay, the phase is not important. This is just a to i pi. It's not as though, as though this is 1 by root 2 and this is root 2. Okay. It's not as though this is 1 by root 2 and this is half. It's only different by the phase factor. So you say that is not a big problem. The other way you take care of it in second quantization is to define a rule in which you say that if I populate the third side or something, then I pick up a factor like minus 1 to the power 3 or something. So there's a way to dodge it and get a plus sign. So what, I, what I wanted to the upshot of it is don't worry about it. The sign does make you a little uncomfortable because this is plus and this is minus. The way you dodge it, so this is the phase factor, so you say I can sort of dodge it by defining permutations in a certain way, so I get a minus.